Good morning. It's a sunny but cold day. And today I plan to work on the lifelines. My wife has pointed out to me a number of times when we've gone out that the there is no pelican hooks for the safety lines. The previous owner <clears throat> had put these little chafe protectors around the tops of each of the stanchions and that was so he could put a tarp over the boat in the winter and the stanchion wouldn't rub and chafe through the tarp. This gave a little protection. But I don't need those. Uh, I've had them on there for, for a while and I thought I better take those off. I cut them off with a pair of uh, cutters like these here. Just clip the zip tie, taking them off, and boy, I found out that's where all the spiders live. There have been a ton of spiders hibernating up in these things, so maybe this will reduce the spider problem <clears throat> on the boat. So I piled them all up over here, and these, this is very interesting. It's common to have the vinyl, <coughs> excuse me. The lifelines are cables, and this is a pretty small cable, but it's a small sailboat. And then you can see these are so old that the original, you can get um, vinyl wrapped lifelines. So they put a vinyl coating over the cable and it deteriorates and wears out. Well, you can see these are so old, they are cooked and melted on there and are rust colored. And then someone decided they would order new vinyl wrap and put new vinyl wrapping over the old lifelines. So those lifelines are shot. I thought I was just going to be able to replace the pelican hooks there and call it done. I decided to be less destructive about this, so I took the bolt out of there with the little cotter key and I can take these ends off by unscrewing this thumb screw take that nut off and I think this will then be a small enough diameter here's what the other side looks like right there I think that'll be a small enough diameter that it'll pass through the top of those stanchions uh, you have to remove this second vinyl coating in between each rail and then I can just pull the cable out to the bow and then undo those up there and that way I can I don't know why I would <laughs> ever think to put these back on but just in case I have a problem ordering new ones or there's a long lead time some supply issue or something I will be at least able to put the cruddy ones back on if I need to. I tied the end of each lifeline to my dock railing here and then I can pull on it tightly do, 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 like so and see which one is longer which is this one right here and then set it down and it reaches that part of the deck right there and then run it back to the edge of the step here it looks like 225 just shy of 19 feet well it's another fine day here and the lifelines have arrived from sailrite so no affiliation, just the reason I'm mentioning them is because they're kind of special. Normally you have to swedge the end fittings on, um, you know, professional swedging machine. But these from Sailrite, actually they're made by Suncor. Suncor, right there, hopefully you can see that. They produce some really nice 316 stainless Pelican hooks and which have quite a bit of adjustment on them and should tension the cable nicely. But what's cool about them is they have 
this contraption on the end of it so that it can self grip onto the end of um, some 3 16 inch diameter cable and the instructions I've never done this before but the instructions are basically right there you slide that that nipple right there onto the cable and then there's three little wedges that are held together with an o-ring that slides on and then you put let me set this down so I can point and then you slide this little washer they call it a pressure collar or something like that pressure washer and you make sure you got about 3 16 of cable showing which is the diameter of the cable slide that over slide this piece over the wedges and then they show an eye here i've got the actual an actual pelican hook they've got a bunch of different attachments they've got eyes they've got turnbuckles they've got these pelican hooks and you put it all together and basically tighten the nut on there or tighten that up as far as you can go then tighten it with a jam nut and and then they suggest um put a little silicone sealant on the end there all right oh there's all the parts there nicely there you go yeah beautiful anyway if you're interested in this i suggest going to the sale right website that's uh they spell it right there sale right and look up uh products lifelines and you'll see these suncore jobs and i think they're going to be cool so let me try going through this installation procedure and let you know what i think well that went super well just as advertised i am so pleased with how this came out i got my uh, goose fit in there or not goose a pelican hook yeah not a, not a goose a pelican anyway it it just kind of you can see how it hooks on there and then you get your thumb on there and you snap it in and that gives a little over center action to get that nice and tight Boing. got both sides and i put um put pelican hooks on both ends so if i have someone helping me dock and they're standing up here on the on the bow you know you got some wind blowing you off the dock and you come in at a 45 degree angle this is the part that's going to come alongside the dock right about where that fender is and it would be real nice if your uh, first mate could uh, unclip the bow one and then step right off the boat so i wish all projects went as smoothly as that that was very satisfying so now time to move inside and do some work in there because it's such a beautiful day i hate to hate to quit i want to take advantage of these temperatures and i'll show you what's next so here's something interesting i found uh this shackle which goes up here and then attaches to this this is the winch for the keel cable and then that's the cable going down the tube i noticed it's bent the pin i don't know if i can rotate it it was real obvious when it was on there but i don't know if you'll be able to see it but that pin is bent and the ears of this have been <laughs> uh, twisted so I was in here to replace it with one of these two shackles and I noticed that this nut right here had backed off until you can see about maybe one or two threads exposed beyond the nut the nut was backed all the way down to here to this this cross pin here and this eye had come separated from the top here by about an eighth of an inch or so there was only a thread or two uh, engaging on this eye remaining in that nut <laughs> so that was 
super scary. So, um, got that torqued back on there. And now I'll know to keep a close eye on that. And uh, maybe I should take it apart and put some uh, red thread locker on there. We'll see if it backs off again. Um, yeah, so I have to decide between one of these. It looks like that's a better match than that link. I like this link better because it doesn't pull it to one side. You know, it's designed to center up on the load where this doesn't center up too good. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what looks best here. Well, I ended up going with the D-shackle because if I used this one, it brought this out too far, which lowered this cable, and it didn't wrap right on the winch. So, in fact, I could maybe even go a little shorter, but definitely don't want to go longer. So, we went with that, and that D-shackle is way stronger than this little guy. So. The weak link is probably that eye and that threaded end there. So I might get a new one of these next year along with a new cable. But for this next season, that'll work. So this pipe cap that covers the spring and plug that pushes against the keel is rusty down in there. I see some pits. So I'm going to uh, sandblast it a bit and uh, repaint it. Okay, the next project I did was I painted the bilge. So I went and I've put two coats of Rust Oleum's finest smoke gray. It's the same gray I used when I built the 16 foot wooden Brockway skiff. The same gray I used inside that. I put down in the bilge here, and down in here, and in here, and underneath where I did the repair. Looks like I might have to do one more quick coat in there. And then I got up in this. Where the electronics and wiring, a lot of the wiring is, and the, the switch, battery switch. And then we've got the bow compartment here. So now, what I'd like to do is get the Delrin plug in here with a spring and the cap. And that's what pushes against the side of the keel and keeps it from uh, wobbling a little bit when you're taking waves to the side those parts just as a reminder right here and I've got a little plumber's paste to put on the threads and I'm gonna grease up the plug and spring real good let me put that in and see how it goes well that went well it uh, went on there good and I could I had pretty good spring pressure pushing against there and so I thought I'd lower the keel and see how it does here so I lowered it down to it I put a red line here it's just really faint and that's sailing position the optimum angle for the keel in fact let me go show you what that looks like in fact that might be a little bit too far down I think I want to you kind of want that forward part there, I think, to be vertical. So I've got to crank that up a bit and remark it. Yeah, you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a there's a little bit of a grease track right there, and that's that plug pushing against there. And the keel is a slight angle to the port side, but not too much. That's I think that'll do the job. We'll see. Um, if you let the keel all the way down, just so you know on these swing keel boats, it can be very dangerous and the reason is, is the boat pitches up on a wave and the keel, if it's all the way down and loose, the keel will swing back with gravity 
and then when you crest the wave and come down the other side into the trough, the keel will swing forward. It's just aligning with gravity, so it swings back. When you go up the wave, it swings forward, it swings back. And if you had the cable where it'll go taunt when it swings forward, that's a great way to break your cable. And uh, we experienced that <laughs> the first time I sailed this boat. Like, uh, what is that banging? And the boat would boom, zoot, up the wave and down, bam. And uh, after about the third or fourth time, I quickly realized Ooh, I need to crank up that keel and get a little more weight on the cable. Very important. So that's when I painted the red stripe on there and found out where it didn't make the noise and where I thought it would be a 30 degree angle. So I'll double check that and remark my stripe. And we are looking good on this fine day. Well, I readjusted it so the red mark is just coming off the winch, which uh, holds it up a little higher. And that's that is about perfect. I think that, that is really good there. It's funny when you get going over three and a half, four knots, that little cable starts to <laughs> hum like a like a violin. Well, not like a violin, but like a low bass. Oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Those lifelines look good. Yeah, can't say much for the blue windows, but the lifelines look sharp. Yeah, I like to look better without the vinyl coating. I just like that stainless look. Sweet. We're doing good. The last major project, winter project left is getting these windows in and painting the areas where I missed the bottom paint, namely underneath the bunks here and the last two feet underneath here, which I'll do when I get the boat on the trailer. The water's not quite high enough to get the boat off the boat lift, so I won't be able to do that just yet. So paint the areas of the bottom paint, do these windows, and then the last thing I was doing was I went from the bow all the way back to the transom and I tightened every single nut bolt washer. <laughs> I, I wanted everything to be nice and tight and I did find some things. The two bolts here on the stem, the two front bolts were totally loose. Uh, most of the stanchions had at least one loose bolt on them up here. So got that all tightened up these were nice and tight everything midship was good um took the the winches off and lubed those this i just did that in a, in a uh, few videos ago retightened all the pulpit here the ladder the motor bracket the i call it the towel rack it's the traveler for the main sheet got those tightened that was a little bit tough there's a little inspection hatch here i reached my arm up and got that one this one, I reach my arm, lift this hatch up and got my arm in there. The last thing that needs to be tightened are the gudgeons that the rudder attaches to. There are two screws or two bolts. There's four total. Two are loose here and two are loose down there. I, I cannot get to them. So I've thought about cutting a, a deck plate here in the back. This doesn't go all the way through the transom. This is a liner. And then the transom is another layer out here. So there's a space, hollow space between these two. And I thought about putting a deck plate there so I could reach in there. But maybe another time. I think, <laughs> I think my wife, if I lift up this hatch, I think she can get down in there and then crawl back and put a wrench on the back end of the nuts there and I can tighten them from the outside. Um, the other way to do it is to remove a bulkhead here and then I can get in there. I was going to go straight out to the Puget Sound and start some sailing videos out there, but with all that I've done to it this year, I think I better sail on the lake a little bit, maybe. We'll see before I take it out to the sound and discover an issue. Okay, well, that is the end of this video. 
and uh, very productive. Got a lot of stuff done. Got the lifelines done, got painting in the bilge, got that plug and spring in there. Um, all is, is going, going well. Full steam ahead. All right. We'll catch you next time. God bless you guys.